guys, we just don't know when. <laughs> exactly. It could be the longest con, but uh, <laughs> it is always a question hanging in the air. But we now have our sight set on Curious Minds for Game 1. It's going to be in the bottom right, the red Protoss player, Cyan. And that, of course, means that in the top left side of this beautiful new map, we are looking at the main base of our Korean Protoss, who are representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming. He's the best. It's Zest. Cyan would argue that he'd bring out whatever the other equivalent of an Etch-a-Sketch is. I Those words is. they were using, I'm sitting here, I was like, I don't know what any of the <laughs> words mean that you guys are using right now. Like, I looked at it as like, oh, that's one of these baby things, you know, that you can wipe yes, clean and yes. you can write something on it again. But I was like, I have no idea what any of that means, what they were talking about. Yeah, I actually don't know what that is called, but I do know what an Etch-a-Sketch is. But yes, apparently Cyan, he took a map and that was good enough for him to throw in a little bit of BM, so I do appreciate the cheek, appreciate him having a, mm -hmm. obviously a sense of humor as well. <laughs> I love, by the way, that one he told me, he's like, you know, at this point, this team was losing 5-0, and he actually <laughs> didn't even beat Zest. It was one-to-one, -one, but he's like, F it, celebration anyway. I can get behind it, though. That's kind of cute. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cute. It's pretty yeah. cute. I do wonder if Zest saw it, and if he did, I bet he just chuckled a little bit. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we, we spawn a Curious Minds, right? And this is a new map in the map pool, and it's one that does have that natural ramp. So we found ourselves another map where low ground expansions are going to be common in PvP. Yep. Zest is somebody who's quite fond of punishing this, though. If he feels that his opponent is playing a little bit greedy than he's supposed to, instead of dropping his own Nexus a bit later, sometimes you'll still see Zest take both of his gases, build a Stargate as quickly as possible, and then he just rallies a Zealot, and then maybe an Adept into a Stalker, or a Zealot into Stalker, into a Void Raid, to the other side of the map. I mean, how many times have we seen that? That doesn't seem to be the case. Zest will expand. He's just going to expand a lot later, but he should be able to get tech down a bit quicker. Yeah, he definitely has a lot more gas. There it is. Stargate's coming down in the front. Great, that wall off. And uh, Cyan has to be a little bit worried right now. Actually, there could be a lot of possibilities from this point on for Zest, who is not going to be dying. He sees his opponent actually did take a Nexus as well. But uh, this is Stargates versus Second Gateway? Alright. Cyan? Yep. They're yeah, both still getting a lot of scouting done. Mm -hmm. As long as that probe is alive, obviously you're going to have a pretty good idea of what's happening. Okay. Like, Zest should feel very comfortable to build an Oracle here, and I think an Oracle would be a wise decision. If Zest would go for a Void Ray, I'd be very confused, because he's also expanding himself, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense since it's a full wall off. I don't think he can be aggressive, so I think Oracle is the only realistic option, and that's why Zest goes for it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a funniest there with Cyan's production. Originally, he was going to grab a Sentry, but then probably realized I have a lot of scouting being done, so Sentry's not going to help me a whole lot in this specific game. Another Stalker might help me actually combat an Oracle, um, but it is now into that Sentry to be useful a bit later on, and that's also going to be helpful for scouting more so into the mid game what's happening after this stargate which is going to pump out two oracles and actually increase the potential of probe kills quite a bit yep and obviously with science build he's not going to have blink anytime soon of course he doesn't have a stargate so he's not going to have a phoenix honestly pretty annoying to defend against uh, shield battery is not going to keep you safe so now basically a Scion, you're forced to spend all your resources for a little while on probes and Stalkers, and that's why it's going to take a long time before him to get Blink. Because if you look at it right now, Zest is also getting a Twilight Council, but he's also the man with the double Oracle out. And if you just look at it simply, sure, Zest is down a couple workers, but I have a hard time believing that these two Oracles cannot kill three probes until Blink is done. Exactly. I mean, right now it's only a one worker difference. It's just, it uh, was more worthwhile what Zest has done here. Cyan does initially block out the Oracles very well, but yeah, as long as they're both alive, they will constantly be threatening. A couple probes here, a couple probes there. And uh, before you know it, Zest will not just be ahead in workers, which he already is, up too, but you know, fairly far ahead. Yeah. That's obviously because Zest or Cyan every now and then has to stop work production because he needs to warp in those stalkers. He wants to make sure he's got enough firepower. Here come the Oracles anyway. Kind of an all pro pull, but it worked out, to be honest. Uh, I feel like it kind of trick, uh, tripped Zest up, right? I don't think that was necessarily a great play, but Zest like, whoa, what's happening over here? And then maybe all the units moved, and he actually retargeted and mistargeted for a split second with the Oracles. Yes, he did, yeah. Probably just it wasn't expecting that specific movement. Cyan does have a forge, he's grabbing plus one, but Zest notably it does not. So that's something that also the hallucination that Cyan was able to send in also would have found out and might be uh, indicating a little bit more aggression. We also know 
as the observers that there is a proxy pylon coming down with a gateway and something that Cyan really has to figure out. I'm a bit worried here for Zess because I don't like the idea of Zess being aggressive in a two base against two base scenario. Now maybe he's just really expecting Cyan to play kind of on the autopilot, go up to three bases, spread himself thin, and then maybe Zess can get a great fight. But it would make a lot more sense for Zess to just go up to three bases the way he's currently doing. But I actually think he had all the freedom to do this a bit quicker. You know, he actually, I wonder if Cyan picked up on this would-be aggression. I mean, he still doesn't know about the proxy gateway, but the lack of forge. And then also there's going to be a lack of robo, right? Because one, the robo is going to be coming down a little bit later in a very straight-up macro PvP. But then also isn't going to be coming down as priority for Zest, who is, as again, we know is proxying a gateway. Cyan could be doing this both defensively as well as just saying you don't have a robo. I don't think you're going to have an observer out in time. This DT timing could be really tricky but first and foremost we got to see what zest is able to do uh, against two bases i'm with you i just feel like it won't be a whole lot which also means that he's not really focused on getting on like, scouting now he is looking around for a proxy but the dark shrine was built in the back of the base cyan He's uh, very close to finishing that, and there still is not a robo here for Zest. Nope, he does have those two oracles, and there is a forge currently being warped in. What you do see very often is when the robo is a bit later, that they just get one cannon in the natural near the shield battery, so that cannon is going to be well protected. But yeah, you can absolutely imagine a doom scenario where Zest is like, hey, I can kill a couple probes, bam, loses the oracles, then the Dark Templars show up, and the game can be over just like that. Zest does have a nice little stalker advantage, and I think you can actually get a cancel on this, and this is also going to reveal the Dark Templars, yeah. so that's very nice for Zest. I did mention that DTs could be used defensively, and that's fair enough, actually. They're used to at least save the Nexus, which I also thought was going to be a goner. I'm actually a bit surprised Zest didn't try and just yeah. one-shot it and then escape, because that seems very possible, but perhaps a little bit of panic as he realizes he has to get his ducks in a row, basically, where the oracles, okay, mm -hmm. there they are, maybe get a cannon, as you were saying. So he, he actually kind of focused on defending the DTs, missed an opportunity. Cyan can be a bit happy about how that went down, because of course DTs, if the game is going to go 8, 9, 10 minutes, DTs are always useful. Yep. I actually think that's exactly what it was. Where Zess is like, I can get the Nexus, but if he has DTs here, there's a very good chance DTs are ready to start swiping on my natural, on my main base, and I'm not going to kill him here because he's got an Immortal. I should just play it safe. Uh, whoa. whoa, that was a forward blink by Cyan trying to get the Oracle. Didn't quite work out. Now Zess goes for a forward blink, guns down the Immortal, and battery overcharge is great, but the stalker numbers are just too high. So Zess can actually one-shot units, blinks forward, gets the second Immortal, and this could very well be it, Zombie Grub. I think it is. So obviously there's two Oracles still alive, so DTs are not going to be the emergency defense if that's what Cyan is planning on. He does manage to retain just enough stalkers with the overcharged battery that it, it survives. But it's not looking like a very healthy life. Cyan also has that plus one that would have worked out for him so well. If he hadn't aggressively blinked, been over eager yeah. to take out the detection, he would have been able to keep back, save his immortal, have two up mortals with overcharge. We're talking about a very different game. Yep, if it wasn't for that forward blink, then I don't think Zess can ever make the blinks that he did. And he would have never been able to grab those two immortals as convincingly as he did. During all of this, Cyan is going to use that one Dark Templar he still had on the other side of the map to swipe away a couple of probes. But uh, Zest is relentless in these kinds of games and he's just going to start picking away at these gateways. Even caught the Observer there, that's also a lovely little pick off. And now that the dust is settled, it's three bases against two and Zest is basically ahead in every single aspect in this game. Very much not in the upgrades, but when you're this far yeah, ahead economically, it is kind of a, it, it probably won't matter, especially with the amount of zealots that Zess will be able to get if Sign was in a position to micro perfectly all across the map with stalkers against 20, 30 zealots. Okay, the stalkers would technically win, but it actually gets really difficult to do Faces. that. And he's going to be on the defensive anyways. Uh -huh. Actually, he uh, walks quite a few of his stalkers into his cetaceous, and Zess is like, cool, now I can maybe try to be aggressive again. He does not quite have plus one yet. He does still have a few more workers, and he, of course, still has the quicker re reinforcements here, because that gateway is still there. <laughs> yeah. So Zess can actually just be aggressive. He could forward blink again for an Immortal if he wants to. He can maybe just activate the barrier. A couple of stalkers on freeze here. I mean, upgrades are great, but it's a numbers game. And I don't think that was a cancel, by the way. That's a straight-up kill on that Nexus. Yeah. So Cyan loses 400 additional minerals. And as Sarah would say, it's going from worse to worse. That's uh, a lot to lose. Cyan's not going to be able to make up for it with upgrades. There is the very aggressive blink forward for Zest with his charge lots coming in from the proxy gateway earlier. Never really even needed a warbo this game. Not even for a warprism. 
This is Zest's game. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But Cyan really does not want to actually admit that. <laughs> I love that you pointed that out. I didn't even think about it yet. I feel like literally every other human on this planet would have gotten a Robo by now. But <laughs> Zest just does things in a very special manner where he's like, no, I still have my oracles. I've got revelations. I don't want to spend money on a Robo. I want to spend money on more units. And I want to get you out of here and mentally get ready perhaps for the next round already. And Zest takes a very convincing 1 0 lead here on Curious Minds. It wasn't going all that bad until that forward blink for Sai, and I feel like yeah. that was just the beginning of the end. It actually was. That was the most important moment of the game, because otherwise I do think that Cyan was playing a very good game. Yeah. Uh, he was obviously getting that huge upgrade lead, which might be a bit hard to tell as the player in the game if you think we're only about half an upgrade ahead, but he was like a, almost an upgrade and a half, it felt like, and uh, you know that would have been very good for him, but I think he was like, DTs kind of worked out. I really want these DTs to do even more, and it made him think too much about killing the detection. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunate. And it's also very hard whenever you blink forward trying to catch oracles. It could be obviously a great play and it could open the door for your Dark Templars to deal a lot of damage. But blinking near a ramp is always a bit tricky because you don't even have high ground vision. So I feel like best case scenario, you get one there, but that didn't even happen because I think he kind of mistargeted, shot at mm -hmm. one stalker. And then Zest was like, oh, cool, you blink forward. Well, look at where that Immortal is, look at where the shield battery is. And Zest just said, that thing is mine. And at this point, we know how good battery overcharge is, but when there are this many units, you can actually just one-shot units. That Immortal was too far away from the battery too, but I don't think even battery overcharge would have been able to keep that bad boy alive. No, I wouldn't have. Uh, Zest very quickly identifying the correct scenario, just blinks forward, takes advantage of it, shoots down the Immortals. It was, it was so close to being an extremely good game for Cyan, actually. If he had played that a bit closer to the vest there and actually defended his third nexus close to it. I don't think Zest finds much victory. Then he's a full two upgrades behind against mm -hmm. three, four immortals as well because he hasn't sniped any off. It's such a good game for Cyan if that didn't happen. Yep, and also very hard for Zest to ever find damage in the main base with a, uh, well, I want to say with a war prison, but he didn't even have a war <laughs> prison, but with any sort of a run by because you can't really get detection there either. So then defensive Dark Templars could come in mm -hmm. very handy against Zealot run bys, whether those happen at the third or the natural. Yeah, it felt like Simon was getting himself very well set up and just kind of fell for it, right? Thought it was an opportunity, but yeah. sometimes you have to ask, do I need to make a play? And the answer was actually no. It was up to Zest to make a play because he was the one without the forge and he's also the one who didn't go for immortals. And we all know that immortals are kind of funny in PvP. Mm -hmm. We all agree that they are great, but they can be really silly in some of these fights that are dominated by zealots and archons. Right. Then they obviously really fall off. But when Zest is so heavy on the stalkers, it's not up to you, Cyan, to make a move. It's really up to Zest, but he kind of opened the door for Zest to make that move. Yeah, I actually kind of wonder if Cyan maybe even felt like he was in a lot of trouble, like he needed to kill the detection, um, which we, I think, could identify that no, that wasn't the case. But in the game, again, might have been a little scared to go up against Zest with a proxy gateway with a bunch of stalkers. We know how powerful Zest can be. Maybe Cyan was also a bit scared, but whatever the reason was, it just at the moment was not the right thing to do. Now we head into 2,000 atmospheres, bottom left, down a game on his last life for the season finals, he is Cyan. He's got a mountain to climb as historically he is 0 and 9 in series against this man. Our Korean Protoss who plays literally in every single tournament out there. These are the big ones. These are the ones that he really wants to win or at least have a deep run. Representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming, it is Zest. And winning this would be a nice boost for him. He lost his PvP against Neeb 0-2. So it was actually a bit uh, stronger of a victory there for Neeb than he, uh, we'd expected. But he has to face Neeb again if he were to win this. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a nice little boost. It's always nice to get that same matchup victory just before you head into the guy who defeated you. But that might be uh, weighing on his mind. Or maybe not. He actually does play in so many tournaments that I got to imagine the games blur together, even as he plays them. <laughs> It's actually kind of funny because I was thinking if I was Zest, I would get rid of the maps where it's likely that you go one gate fast expand and it could potentially turn into Phoenix against Phoenix. But there are just so many right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You have yeah. to worry about Blackburn. You have to worry about Pride of Altaris. You have to worry about Curious Minds. There's just so many maps with a ramp leading into the natural that maybe he's almost forced to play one of those. Because uh, I don't think on 2K he played a bad game against Neep. I just think he mishandled the defense a little bit with his disruptors. Uh, I actually, like, I was talking about it with Ben as well on the break. And the more I thought about it, the sillier I thought it was that he tried to kill the Archons with his disruptor. Because if your army comp is a stalker disruptor and you've got cannons and batteries, the last unit you ever have to worry about is the Archon. 
Because Archons are actually not good against Stalkers, and they're not good against Cannons and Batteries. So if you just get rid of either Zealots or the Stalkers, you make life a lot easier, because we know that Archons can be very derpy if they are by themselves alone against Stalkers. Yeah, I guess it is just so tempting when they all crowd together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are very big. It's a nice juicy <laughs> target, but yeah. not the right target. Oh, we have Zest going for a Stalker Sentry opener into safe Stalker Stalker behind it, but Cyan is actually going for quite a few Adepts, so we already have two. He's making another two. See if he actually goes up to six and thus eight as well. Zest is going to have a scouting pile on. Mm -hmm. uh, nice, to be honest, because it's going to yeah. give him the heads up that it's exactly. not just two Adepts, it's Adept number three and four. And if you're Cyan, like, okay, you want to expand eventually, but you also don't want to kill a pylon with two Adepts, because that just takes forever. So Cyan is going to drop the Twilight Council now before expanding, and Zest is feeling quite comfortable that he can expand. It is going to be at least six and then probably eight Adepts, but this just takes a little while. This is really annoying for Cyan. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, you know, you could be trying to threaten with quite a few Adepts, with the four Adepts now, but I guess the real threat is often with the eight Adepts a bit later on. So clearing up the pylon is kind of a must. You can't just let them constantly scout what you're building and if you're building a Nexus. Zest does need to be a bit careful with his three Stalkers. I don't know if he's just going to try to show up in the natural while the Adepts are on the other side of the map, because obviously he cannot win this fight. Adepts are not great against Stalkers, but in these numbers, yeah, you actually kind of like your Adepts. He's making two more, by the way, so yeah, he's going yeah, up to yeah. eight. That makes obviously a lot of sense. But this is not something that Zest can fight. I have the feeling that Zest just wants to recall his Stalkers or bring the Adepts home as he's going for a very quick Dark Shrine. And that's not something I think Cyan is going to be able to deal with unless he scouts it. Right, he's got to scout this, but that shouldn't happen. Zest is going to be blocking with the Cybernetics Core to help uh -oh. you building and actually get to uh, health very quickly. So the Adepts recall. can't burst it down. The Stalkers are going to have a tough time actually killing a lot with a Shield Battery there. I think they eventually will be recalled, and the Adepts are just going to actually kind of go for uh, at least stop the pro production by looks of things. They can't do very much more. Actually, they did go up into the high ground, got force fueled it. They can, of course, shade out, but not before at least one or two of them might die. Actually, they all lived, but injured. <laughs> Nice sign drop the force within his main base, forcing that recall in the end there. I'm actually surprised that Zest didn't go for that pylon immediately that was powering two of the gateways, because two gateways is pretty much everything, as this shade will also finish up. Sentry gets picked up, one stalker goes down. But I think that's kind of it, man. I don't think Sign can get a whole lot more than this, oh. even though Zest's micro is a little bit derpy, but Zest gets a lot of adapts. And that Dark Shrine zombie grub, yep. we mentioned it when it started, it's pretty much done now. And we look at science side of the map, there is nothing that can detect Dark Templars at this point. No, that's, that's actually game. There was no Stargate to start things off. There's no Robo as Cyan is thinking a bit more about the Adepts and then maybe in the future he would have oh. gotten around to it. The Robo comes down for Zest, actually, funnily enough. So that is it's pretty much just game, guys. Like, well, yeah, sometimes you can do weird stuff, right, with force fuels, and we can really buy a lot of oh. time. There is the Robo for Cyan, but obviously if one Dark Templar sneaks into the main base, it's absolutely game over. Can we start okay. dropping okay. force fields, Cyan? Okay. Are we paying attention? Oh. Yes, he is paying attention. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's still going to be painful, of course. We're going to lose the battery, and this is not going to be an easy hold. Maybe indeed game over, but I guess Cyan at least has a tiny chance. So. Yeah, yeah, at least he has a chance. It seemed like he did pick up on something was a miss, so he starts his robo and was looking at the natural to see if the DT Shimmer was there. So, you know, it was good on him, but it was probably just 20, 30 seconds too late. Yeah. That's also just losing straight up the fight. He's trying to do his best here and make sure that the robo is going to finish, so he blocks uh -huh. off, which of course is going to make him lose all those probes. But uh, surviving against the DTs is uh, no longer the major task. He just has to survive against everything. Zest now has to throw at him. Yep, these talkers of Zest are just finding a lot of success. That force field is a miss. The Dark Templar is sneaking to the main base. We've already lost a lot of workers. We're going to lose even more. This was Cyan, his very first appearance at the season finals. And he gave us some good games. Unfortunately, Zest and Clem were just a little too good. GG.